Shaolin Kung Fu, the legendary fighting style of China, has a long and rich history with many legends passed down through the generations. And in certain martial arts circles, especially in the South, there is no legend so well known as the burning of the Shaolin Temple and the escape of the Five Elders, which is basically the founding story of all Southern styles of Kung Fu, including Wing Chun. Hunga. And Choi Lei Fu. And the idea of a group of five elite kung fu masters that goes on missions together has even made its way into popular culture with sets of characters like the Furious Five in Kung Fu Panda. But what is the real story behind the five elders? Did they really exist? Was the Shaolin Temple really burned down? You're gonna find out in this video. This is Great Kung Fu Masters from Chinese History Part 3. The Five Elders of Shaolin. So at the end of the Ming Dynasty in 1644, the Manchus took over China. They were a people from the Northeast who were not ethnically Chinese. They had their own language and culture, yet they established the Qing Dynasty in China. Many Chinese people resisted being ruled by foreigners and still had the idea of restoring the Ming. This was called Fan Qing Fu Ming, or Oppose the Qing, Restore the Ming. Those who had fought against the Ming forces, or those plotting a rebellion, hid in temples disguised as monks to avoid capture. Thus, in 1647, the Qing army targeted the Shaolin Temple and burned it down, with only five monks, or actually four monks and one nun, escaping. These five became the Five Elders of Shaolin, or Shaolin Wuzu. Now, I just want to pause there for a moment and say that this is one version of the story. Some versions say it happened in 1674, some in 1732, some say it was a southern Shaolin temple in Fujian province that was burned, not the northern one. Some say both were burned. Truth is, this has been passed down as legend by martial arts schools and secret societies in the south of China. And I remember I was told this story when I learned Tiger Crane style as a teenager and never questioned it. There isn't much historical record of any of it, but we will try to give you a version that makes sense. All right, let's get back to the story. So the five elders were, and I'm gonna say them in Mandarin because I'll butcher the names if I do it in Cantonese. Zhi Shan, Wu Mei, Bai Mei, Feng Dao De, and Miao Xian. Now the most famous of the five elders in pop culture is probably Bai Mei or Pai Mei as they call him in Bill Bill. <laughs> But he was also portrayed many times in different Chinese Kung Fu movies, and he is normally the villain, and you're gonna understand why as you hear the rest of the story. Then we have Wu Mei, who is the Shaolin nun who taught Kung Fu to Yan Yong Chun or Yim Wing Chun in Cantonese, and that gave birth to the Wing Chun style. This supposedly happened because Yong Chun was being harassed by a man who wanted to marry her, and in the end, she challenged him to a fight in order to get out of the marriage. She won the fight and kept her freedom. Wing Chun became popular in southern China and was passed down to Ip Man, or Ye Wen in Mandarin, who was Bruce Lee's teacher and the hero of the very popular Ip Man movies with Donnie Yen. It's a style so powerful it can defeat Mike Tyson. In reality, it really depends on the practitioner, not just the style. As we've seen with MMA fighter Xu Xiaodong challenging many traditional Chinese masters, including one Wing Chun master and winning. Well, the fight was judged as a draw, but everyone knows that's not true. But let's now move on to the remaining elders. But before we do, guys, I love to drink coffee, especially when I'm writing scripts for my videos and deeply researching topics. It helps me focus. But drinking a load of cups of coffee every day can give you the jitters and when you come down off all that caffeine that's not a good feeling either. When I'm training Pai Mei's five point exploding heart technique I don't want to be shaking from a caffeine rush. I need inner peace. Well Days Coffee, the sponsor of today's video, have found a way through science 
to make coffee that is smooth and light in caffeine. Dr. Grant Lee, a former cancer researcher from Yale University, developed a patented process to ferment coffee beans with a 50 enzyme complex, and the result is a coffee that is less acidic, smoother, mycotoxin free, and contains only 15% of the caffeine of a regular cup of coffee, so you can drink it all day with no problems. You'll find it much more affordable than coffee such as Kopi Luwak from Indonesia, which is manufactured by passing the beans through the digestive system of an animal and of course no animals were mistreated in its production. Personally, I find it a great coffee to drink multiple cups of throughout the day due to its low caffeine content, and those with digestive issues will find it easier on their stomachs as well. They roast the beans right here in upstate New York and ship to the US and Canada. If you want to try Day's Coffee, you can get a discount on your order with my code LEARNCHINESENOW when you enter it at checkout. Link is below. So, in one version of the story, these three have a conflict with Pai Mei, which sets him up as the villain for every kung fu movie made after that. So Pai Mei, or Bai Mei, supposedly thought that the Ming had become corrupt and took information about the resistance to the Qing Emperor, and this led to the attack on Shaolin, although he did apparently warn the temple of the attack. <laughs> Now afterwards, the five elders escaped and Bai Mei went to Ermei Shan, Mount Ermei in Sichuan province, one of the sacred mountains of China. Bai Mei then apparently trained an anti-imperial force, but was captured, and in order to avoid him and his followers being tortured to death, agreed to train imperial soldiers, who then went on to attack the southern Shaolin temple, with Bai Mei himself killing the abbot Zhi Shan, one of the other five elders, by breaking his neck. In some versions of the story, Bai Mei was then challenged by Miao Xian, who was killed, and then finally by Feng Daode, who prevailed, killing Bai Mei. Then in some other versions, it was Feng Daode who conspired with Bai Mei to burn down the southern Shaolin temple. But basically, Bai Mei is portrayed as a traitor to Shaolin, or at best, someone who faced a choice between him and his students all being killed and him betraying Shaolin, and he chose to betray Shaolin. So the story is kind of muddled up with loads of different versions being passed down in different lineages, because after the alleged burning of the Southern Shaolin Temple, the Kung Fu styles in the South were passed down through families and secret societies, such as the Tian Di Hui, or Heaven and Earth Society. This then spread and branched off into other secret groups, such as the San He Hui, the Three Harmonies Society, and this is often translated as the Triads, as in in the Chinese organized crime syndicates that are common throughout Hong Kong and the South of China. So when you're keeping things a secret to avoid detection by Qing imperial forces, because they want to kill you, and passing them down by word of mouth, no wonder there are many different versions of the story from different Kung Fu schools. So what do I think about this story? Well, it does seem that there was some kind of Shaolin base in Fujian province. It was likely referred to as the Southern Shaolin Temple and set up by anti Tai Ching fighters who'd been hiding in the northern temple and fled south. The five elder, referred to as Zhi Shan Chan Shi, to use his full name and title, was supposedly the abbot, and this makes sense because all five of the southern family styles trace some relationship to him, especially Hong Jia Quan or Hung Ga in Cantonese. The founder of Hong Jia Quan, Hong Xi Guan, was the number one student of Zhi Shan Chan Shi, and the two may have traveled together to Guangdong province. These southern styles then gave rise to heroes such as Feng Sai Yuk, or in Mandarin, Feng Shi Yu. He was apparently the grandson of one of the five elders, Miao Xian, although we're not really sure whether he was fictional or real. He was played by Jet Li in a movie of the same name. And then, of course, we have Wang Fei Hung, or Huang Fei Hong in Mandarin, also played by, um, Jet Li. And that, guys, is the story of the five elders, basically the founding fathers and one founding mother of all of the southern styles of Kung Fu. They were real characters from history, but they have been in so many wuxia novels and movies that the line between fact and fiction is now kind of blurred. If you want to hear the story of another group of masters, the Ten Tigers of Canton, one of those was Huang Feihong's father, do hit the like button. If this video gets a load of likes, we'll do it. 
Also, don't forget to get yourself some Days Coffee with a 15% discount using my code LEARNCHINESENOW. We ship to the US and Canada, and you can do that through the link below. Also, do check out our new channel, Secrets of the Ancients. I'll put a link to it on screen now. We're covering, you know, ancient mysteries, but not just about China, about all different cultures of the world. So do check it out if you're interested. Subscribe here if you're new. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.